I think it is again, yes. So I was saying that we are going to do different things during this um, course or this module. The first thing is that we are going to um, participate on different activities. In this case, I'm going to show you different activities related to the topics. Uh, we are going to put into practice um, different topics. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you different examples, different exercises, and all of that things. And also, we are going to work on the platform. That is one of the most important things, and you already know that, that you are going to perform some exercises there. And that is like the way in which you are going to complete part of your course. Es importante, ¿verdad? Nuestra participación en las actividades durante las sesiones y también es importante que completemos las actividades que tenemos en la plataforma porque a través de, la, de las actividades de la plataforma nosotros vamos a poder eh, llevar un registro, ¿verdad? De, eh, de lo que estamos haciendo de nuestro trabajo. In this case, you know that you need to complete section one and two for the first week. So the last day of this week, you are going to complete the section one and section two of the platform. La sección 1 y sección 2 de la plataforma tienen que estar completa para el último día de esta semana, que es el día jueves. Y lo más seguro es que se extienda hasta el viernes. Pero uh, vamos a tratar de completarlo ya para el día jueves. So, eh, we're going to begin with something. Eh, in this case... I like to work with documents online. Me gusta trabajar con documentos en línea. Eh, no voy a mandarles documentos a que ustedes los tengan que descargar o que cada semana se les va a estar dando un PDF o un documento Word. No, in this case, I like to, to work on documents online in which um, you are going to access to the information and you are going to do it every time you want every time you need to, to look for an information and uh, um, also even when the course is um, completed you can have access to that uh, document I have a lot of documents in my um, like in my folder and you can access to the document because um, you have the link. But in this case, uh, maybe we have two or three months uh, after the, the module and it's available too. Tengo eh, los documentos de los otros cursos que todavía están disponibles eh, porque a mí me gusta que tengan acceso, verdad, a sus Eh, documentos de su información, así que esos documentos siempre quedan disponibles para ustedes. El día jueves yo les voy a estar mandando el enlace del eh, documento, es el único enlace. Si hay algún material extra, yo se lo voy a mandar, pero eso es para consumo propio de ustedes. No es solo del módulo, sino para que ustedes lo puedan tener a la mano. Pero en este caso, el documento eh, más importante va a ser el del enlace, donde ustedes no van a necesitar descargarlo. Simplemente entran al enlace y ya tienen acceso a la información. So, in that, in that case, I'm going to show you what is the document and what is the thing that you're going to see. Uh, this one is your document and the first thing that you're going to see is an image. That image is related to a phrase that I like to share with you every single week. In this case, you're just going to see this image once a week. Vamos a ver esta imagen una vez a la semana. Quiere decir que van a ver cuatro imágenes diferentes um, a través de lo que es el módulo. This is the phrase for this week. Uh, the next week, you are going to have another one and with the other two weeks too. This one, it says, I never dreamed about success. I worked for it. Nunca soñé sobre el éxito. 
Yo trabajé por ello. In this case, it's saying that you need to, to work to complete all the activities that you want for your future. If you want to have something in the future, you need to work for it. If you want to change something from your life, you need to work for it. If you need to achieve some goals, you need to work for it. So in this case, it's not just thinking about the dreams that I have, it's to work for them. Una cosa es que soñemos, una cosa es que pensemos, una cosa es que queramos. La otra parte es que tenemos que trabajar para completar estas actividades para poder lograr nuestros sueños. And in this case, this one is part of this uh, work. Because in this case, you know that English is a big part of the, the world in this case. And you need to, to learn different languages to um, maybe change your work, uh, to um, travel abroad. In this case, you can uh, go to the US and you can understand the language and you can access to different countries that are speaking English. And it's like, a window or a door that we can access to another thing. Now, we're going to see what is the topic number one. What is the topic that we are going to develop right now? So in this case, we have an objective, but let me show you the image. In this case, it's related to this question. And the question said, how often do you exercise? Esta pregunta es sobre qué tan seguido nosotros nos ejercitamos. Ahora, estamos hablando de ejercicio en este tema número uno. And we have an objective here. And it says, in this lesson, um, participants will listen to a conversation about how often they do an activity. ¿Qué tan seguido, verdad? Nosotros hacemos una actividad. A eso se refiere. Um, básicamente nos está diciendo que con qué frecuencia nosotros hacemos una actividad. Pero primero vamos a escuchar una conversación que tiene que ver con esta frecuencia, ¿verdad? En la que nosotros hacemos una actividad. ¿A qué se refieren esas actividades? Básicamente a ejercicio. But let me go to the platform. Nos vamos a mover a la plataforma en la cual vamos a escuchar esta primera conversación. That it's called, I hardly ever exercise. Casi nunca me ejercito. So let's see what is the information that we have on the video. So let me go to the beginning of the video and we're going to listen this conversation. So we are going to listen carefully and then we are going to make like um, a discussion about the information that we have on this video. So let's pay attention to the conversation. Section six, how often do you exercise? In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about how often they do an activity. Pay attention to the question, how often, and what they use to respond. I hardly ever exercise. You're really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? Well, I almost always get up early, and I lift weights for an hour. Seriously? Sure. And then I often go inline skating. Wow! How often do you exercise like that? About five times a week. What about you? Oh, I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. I guess I'm a real couch potato. In our next session, I will teach you adverbs of frequency so you can respond how often you do a particular activity. Pay attention to the question how. I hardly ever exercise. So, this is the conversation. This is the first conversation. I hardly ever exercise. So we have two people here that are talking about uh, 
the things that they do. In this case, we have one of these persons that is really feed. Uh, and we have another one that is not like the, um, she doesn't like to uh, make some exercise in this case. So we are going to see every of the statements here. So we begin with Mary, that is the first person talking in this conversation. You are really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? Eres bastante, um, podemos decir lo que, le está diciendo que está como en forma. Está en forma, ¿verdad? Y le pregunta, ¿haces ese ejercicio o haces mucho ejercicio? Y él le responde, well, I almost always get up early and I lift weights for an hour. Él casi siempre se levanta temprano y levanta pesas por una hora. And she said, seriously? Sure. And then I often go inline skating. Y le dice, seguro. Y uh, algunas veces, ¿verdad? O seguido eh, va a patinar. Wow, how often do you exercise like that? ¿Qué tan seguido? How often do you exercise like that? ¿Qué tan seguido eh, te ejercitas de esa forma? About five times a week. Acerca eh, o cinco veces a la semana. What about you? Oh, I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. I guess I am a real couch potato. Yo casi nunca me ejercito. Usualmente me gusta o solo veo la televisión en mi tiempo libre. Creo que soy un... What is coach potato? ¿A qué se refiere el coach potato? Who knows what is a coach potato? Como un saco de papas, algo así. Mm, yes, but in this case, when she is talking about... Watching TV. Como sedentario. Um, sí, tiene que ver con. Tela. Ajá, tiene que ver con sedentario. Entonces sería una persona, podemos llamarle perezosa, ¿verdad? A couch potato is someone that doesn't like to do anything. Yeah. But in this case, she is saying something very important. Ella está diciendo que en su tiempo libre. Ella es una real couch potato. Es una persona perezosa en su tiempo Hola. libre. And I think it is like um, kind of valid because uh, in some cases we have a lot of work to do during the week. And when we have time, we, in some cases, we like to spend some time in... Um, in a sofa or in our bedrooms watching some TV shows or something like that. And it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of like valid to do something like that because in some cases we work five days a week or maybe six days a week. And in some cases we just need some time to feel ourselves again. So, This is the conversation. Aquí tenemos ya el ejemplo de nuestra conversación en el cual, pues, estamos eh, viendo, ¿verdad? Cómo se aplica esta información de eh, del how often. Y tenemos una pregunta en el documento, así que vamos a mostrar el documento again para ver la pregunta que ya teníamos por ahí. And let me show you this one. How often do you exercise? ¿Qué tan seguido se ejercitan ustedes? In this case, you are going to think about the exercise that you do during the day. In some cases, it is not related to, to the exercise that we can uh, perform in the gym. It is sometimes related to exercise that we do during the day in our jobs. Maybe uh, we walk a lot. Uh, we live like very um, heavy things. We play with children. 
I don't know, different activities that we perform. Eh, son actividades que también nosotros realizamos durante el día, no solo el gimnasio, no solo una rutina en específico, sino a veces eh, actividades que estamos haciendo durante el día, como correr, caminar, en el caso de algunos que tengan pues esta posibilidad de nadar, eh, de jugar con los niños, ¿verdad? O de, o de alguna actividad que requiera el uso de la fuerza o del cuerpo. In that case, we can think about the exercise that we perform, the activities that we perform during the day. So, how often do you exercise? I'm going to give you five minutes. So, 9.25. Yes, 9.25 a las 9.25. Ustedes van a eh, comenzar a escribir en el chat. En, este, en, en principio, vamos a empezar con el chat. That is the first thing. Eh, ustedes me van a ir escribiendo la respuesta a esa pregunta. How often do you exercise? Y podemos responder de la siguiente manera. I, let me see, where is the, here it is. I, y podemos poner un adverb of frequency. I always, o podemos poner I almost always. I usually, I never exercise, I always exercise in the morning, I almost always uh, go for a running, I usually go swimming, I never exercise, o podemos utilizar simplemente, I play soccer twice a week. Sometimes. Yes, you can use sometimes. Of course. Aquí tenemos diferentes formas de contestar. Entonces, tenemos cinco minutos, five minutes right now to answer this question. You can write the um, statement on the chat and I'm going to write it on the document. Teacher. Tell me. One question. Uh... How many sentences? One, just one. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening.
Okay, it's time to write the statements. So please answer the question and I'm going to write the phrases on the documents so you can see the different uh, answer that your um, partners can uh, give to the same question. So I'm going to write the answers here. Okay, we have this statement here. I'm going to move to this one. And we have examples. Let's see what is the answers that you have here. Uh, I usually exercise two times a week, okay. We are going to change a little bit this uh, statement. We're going to write twice a week. It's shorter. Uh, I usually play soccer in the stadium with my friends, okay? Then I always practice English. Ah, oh, it's very good. Um, okay, thank you. I practice five days a week from Monday to Friday and sometimes on Saturdays. I ride the bike. Oh, wow, you are very active. Perfect. Um, I, uh, we're going to change a little bit. I always exercise five days a week. And I'm going to add this one sometimes. Ride a bike. Okay, perfect. And next one, let's see. I always go to the gym three times per week. And I walk around 30 minutes every day. Oh, very good. I always go to the gym three times a week. And I walk around 30 minutes. every day. I usually exercise in the morning and in the afternoon I play soccer. All oh, very good. I usually exercise in the morning and in the afternoon I play soccer. Um, I always do exercise. Oh, that is a good exercise. I always do exercises going up and going down the stairs when I pick up my son in the school every day. That is a very good exercise. Okay, next one. I oh, I usually play basketball for 30 minutes every day. I usually play basketball for 30 minutes every day. Okay, next one. I go to the gym every day. 
So we're going to change and we are going to use the word always. I always go to the gym. Like this. I never exercise. It is very difficult because of my work schedule and my children. Yes, I understand because I have almost the same situation. I work um, the whole day from seven to five and then I work from 8 to 10 p.m. So it is kind of hard to do this kind of activity because uh, after my work, my first work, that is the, the, from seven to five, I need to complete some activity for the next day. So in that case, I am like, um, I don't know, like it's kind of overwhelming. Sometimes I go running in the park when I have time, okay. I sometimes go running in the park. I exercise three times a week. Oh, I have two. In this case, I'm going to add this one. I exercise three times a week. Okay, and I think we're going almost at the end. I usually go to the gym twice a week, okay. And I'm just going to say that, don't worry about the, the uh, examples here because you're going to have the whole thing in your hands in a couple of days. So don't worry about that. I usually go to the gym twice a week. I practice soccer six days a week. Oh, wow. Six days a week. So you just rest one day. I usually have to walk 17 kilometers a week. Ah, ah, I was like scared that you would walk 70 kilometers per day, but in this case, it's a week. I usually walk 17 kilometers a week. Okay. In this case, we have different um, phrases here uh, related to the frequency of um, with the frequency of the activities that you perform during the week. In this case, it is related to the exercise. And in my case, it's like, as many of you said, it's kind of difficult to have this kind of um, a schedule related to the exercise because I have like a very hard time working because I have like um, a lot of hours during the day in my job but my kind of exercise is to play with children because I work with children in the morning uh, because I am a teacher and I am working with kindergarten so in that case it's kind of demanding because you need to have a lot of energy for that kind of uh, students because they are kids and they have a lot of uh, energy and they like to play, they like to run and you need to, to be with them. So in that case, my kind of exercise is to play with the children, is to uh, be with them. It's hard, it's tiring, but it's funny. It's kind of, uh, you can like have your moment of, 
uh, funny things with uh, the kids, but that is another thing. That is not the, the main uh, thing about the exercise because that is uh, something very different. So in this case, we have completed this part of the question. And in this case, you have answered the question that uh, how often do you exercise? In this case, if you can see on the video, uh, we have like something very specific about the next topic. And in this case, uh, it was saying that you are going to learn something about adverbs. In this case, we are going to talk about adverb of frequency. That is the thing that we are using in this kind of statements. Vamos a utilizar los adverbios de frecuencia. Vamos a hacer un pequeño review de qué son los adverbios de frecuencia o cómo los utilizamos más que todo. Vamos a ver cuál es el porcentaje que vamos a utilizar, cuáles son las palabras que eh, vamos a necesitar en los adverbs of frequency y un par de ejemplos sobre estos adverbs. But we are going to see the topic that is eh, adverb of frequency. And we have the objective. And it says, by the end of this session, you will learn how to ask and answer questions using adverb of frequency. Quiere decir que en este caso vamos a hablar de preguntas y respuestas con el adverb of frequency. ¿Cuál es la estructura que vamos a utilizar para las preguntas y respuestas? But we are going to learn something about this. But give me a second. Okay, in this case, we have the objective. I'm going to write the objective here. Now, we are going to remember what are the adverb of frequency and also what is the percentage that we can give to every of these adverb of frequency. ¿Cuál es el porcentaje que le podemos dar a cada una de esas palabras? ¿Cuáles son esas palabras? Y un ejemplo que los representa. So, in this case, I'm going to insert a table in which I'm going to give you this information. And I have one, two, three, four, five, and six words. And we are going to use the information like this. So in this case, I have here the percentage first. Vamos a poner primero los porcentajes. In this case, I have 100%. Next one, I have 90%. Next is 70%. Then I have 50%, 10%, and the last one is zero. So here we have different percentage of the frequency in which we can perform an activity. Esto representa la frecuencia con la que nosotros hacemos una actividad. Según esto, en el primer eh, caso, acá vamos a poner la palabra que representa el 100%. In this case, we have the word always. Then we have usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever. Or we can also say rarely, and we have never. I know that we have different words, or we have more words that we can use in this 
a table, but in this case, we are going to use this one. Tenemos más palabras que eh, representan a los adverbs of frequency, pero en este caso vamos a utilizar estas. Ahora, vamos a ver ejemplos que tengan que ver con es, el uso de estas adverbs of frequency. En the number one, we have, you are always late. Siempre estás tarde o siempre llegas tarde. We usually go to the cinema on Sunday. We usually go to the cinema on Sunday. He often cooks pasta. We sometimes order pizza for dinner. She hardly ever smiles. And the last one. They are never at home when he when we call. So we have here the examples. So in this case, um, sometimes we can say that we have this uh, like positive and negative connotation of the adverse. En algunos casos tenemos lo que son las connotaciones positivas y negativas de los, uh, de los adverse of frequency, que son aquellos que están arriba del 50, son connotaciones positivas, ¿verdad? Son por el uso o por... Eh, la frecuencia en la que se hace una acción. Los que están debajo del 50 eh, son connotaciones negativas. No habla de la acción en sí, sino de eh, con qué frecuencia se hace. En este caso, no importa si la acción de la que estamos hablando sea mala, como por ejemplo fumar o beber alcohol o alguna otra uh, cosa. Es la frecuencia, nada más. Por eso es que se le llama eh, positiva o negativa. Eh, ahora, vamos a ver algunos, eh, alguna información extra relacionada con esta parte de los adverbs. In this case, the adverb of frequency tell us how often something happens. That is the thing that we are saying eh, a lot in this uh, session. So in this case, we have that the adverbs of a frequency tell us how often something happens. Es la frecuencia de lo que hacemos, ¿verdad? En, en cuanto suceden las cosas. En este caso, ya les decía, no se preocupen por los ejercicios, por los ejemplos, por la información. Eh, luego yo les voy a mandar el enlace para que ustedes puedan accesar a todo esto. Aquí ya tenemos cuáles son nuestros adverbios más utilizados. So in this case, I'm just uh, going to add more examples related to, to this information. So we are going to see more examples. And in this case, we are going to use a specific form of writing these uh, examples. So in this case, I'm going to use this one. So for the first one, we have Peter is always Peter is always getting into trouble. They usually get their work done on time. 
He, I often watch movies online. Jack sometimes come over for dinner. I never complain at work. Okay, in this case, we have the example of the adverse. Now, the important part here, the questions. Vamos a adentrarnos en la parte importante que son las preguntas. En este caso, vamos a ver cómo se hacen estas preguntas, cuál es la estructura que vamos a utilizar para esta pregunta. Y también vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de preguntas con los adverse of frequency. So in this case, when using adverb of frequency in the question form, you are going to put the adverb before the main verb. That is the main thing that you need to know. In this case, it is not related to the, um, the position on the, the statement or the phrase. Uh, in this case, is when you have your um, main verb, you are going to put the adverb before the main action or the main verb. Teacher. Tell me. Eh, disculpe la pregunta. Este, los, ¿cómo se llama los? Estos son los. Los adverbios de frecuencia. Con frecuencia. Va. Ajá. Y los otros son conectores, no es lo mismo. No, los conectores son aquellos que nos ayudan a unir dos ideas. Dos oraciones. Estos uh, adverbios son nada más nos van a ayudar a nosotros a expresar o a decirles a las personas con qué frecuencia nosotros hacemos una actividad. En este caso, el adverbio va a ir siempre antes del verbo principal, antes de la acción. Por ejemplo, la palabra, el, la acción comer, que es un verbo, I always eat my breakfast. At 7 a.m. Yo siempre me como mi desayuno a las 7 de la mañana. Ahí yo solo le estoy diciendo con qué frecuencia yo estoy realizando una acción. En el caso de los conectores es para eh, tener dos ideas y yo voy a utilizar un conector en medio de ellas que me ayude a conectar esas dos ideas y que se transforme en una idea mucho más estructurada. Ah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, in the case of the attendance list, um, in this course, we are not going to take the attendance list. No se va a tomar la, la asistencia como tal, o sea, donde yo voy a ir mencionando su nombre y tachando. Lo que sí se va a hacer es la participación. Aquí sí se va anotando las participaciones. Eh, eso sí es bastante importante a la hora de la sesión. No la asistencia como tal, pero sí la, um, la participación de cada uno de ustedes en las actividades. Así que attendance list is not like. Uh, we are going to have a lot in other uh, courses. No lo vamos a tener como en otros cursos. So don't worry. So in this case, when we're using the adverb of frequency in the question form, we are going to put the adverb, I mean, the adverb before the main verb. So we're going to see the structure. Vamos a ver cuál es la estructura para esta pregunta. Primero, vamos a comenzar escribiendo nuestra pregunta with auxiliary verb. Vamos a empezar con un verbo auxiliar. Then, with the subject, que en este caso ya sabemos que la mayoría de nuestras oraciones llevan los sujetos I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. But you can also use a um, proper nouns. Ustedes pueden utilizar nombres propios. But in this case, it's 
like easy for us to create this kind of uh, questions with um, or this kind of statements with the pronouns. Then we have the adverb. This is the place of the adverb. Adverb, then the main verb, and then the complement, and of course the question mark. Oh my God, it is not the question mark here. Like this. So we're going to have this structure for the questions. Vamos a hacer preguntas con esta estructura. Vamos a utilizar lo que son la, los auxiliares en este caso, pero también podemos crear oraciones o preguntas con las WH questions and also with the verb to be. It is not like we are just going to have these questions um, solo con los, los auxiliares, sino que también lo podemos hacer con diferentes eh, formas, ¿verdad? Ok, let's see, let's see how this kind of question it's like. But let me, give me a second. Ok. In this case, we are going to see some examples of this question, but I'm going to add different questions. In this case, I'm going to add the auxiliary verb questions, and I'm going to add WH uh, questions. And yeah, vamos a hacer preguntas con el auxiliar, pero en este caso va a ser el auxiliar do, y también les voy a hacer algunas preguntas con las WH words. What, when, how, why, all of the words. Así que vamos a ver un poco sobre ambos, ambas estructuras. In this case, we're going to begin with the auxiliary verbs. Remember that is the verb to be, uh, I mean, the verb do, the auxiliary do. The first one, do you often go to the cinema? Aquí estamos aplicando la estructura. Do, auxiliary verb. You, the subject. Often, the adverb. Go, the main verb. To the cinema, the complement, and the question mark. Then, did he sometimes leave the classroom? Did he sometimes leave the classroom? Next one, do they usually come late to class? Another one, do you mm, here? Do you always read magazines on weekends? Do you always eat lunch? Do you always eat lunch before class? And we have these examples of the auxiliary verb. Now we are going to see with the WH words. Vamos a ver las preguntas que llevan WH words. But let me change for a start. Here we have what. What do you usually usually do on Friday? Night. Where do you always go on weekends? Where do you always go on weekends? 
How often do you exercise? That is the question that we have at the beginning of the document. How often do you exercise? Where do you go after class? Where, uh, in this case, um, So in this case, we have like um, some examples of the question that we can create with the advert of frequency. En ese caso, son algunos de los ejemplos que nosotros podemos crear con eh, los adverbios. Um, we have different questions that we can uh, create with the adverbs. In this case, I am not using uh, all the adverbs that we have on the list, but in this case, it's just like to make some examples of the questions. In this case, you can answer like expressing your ideas using the same um, adverb. Ustedes pueden utilizar el mismo adverbio para responder esas preguntas o simplemente ustedes pueden utilizar diferentes la, como eh, expresiones para responder estas preguntas. Um, we have like a couple of minutes to end this session. In this case, I am just uh, going to tell you something. Eh, vamos a estar trabajando de esta manera, ¿verdad? Los temas en los cuales yo voy a estar poniendo la información en el documento. Eh, básicamente yo voy a traerles eh, como información nueva sobre los temas o tal vez esta información que ya hemos visto antes. Eh, pero que simplemente lo vamos a utilizar como un recordatorio de lo que ya conocemos de los temas. Eh, también voy a traerles ejercicios. Hoy comenzamos con la parte escrita de los ejercicios eh, o de la práctica, pero vamos a tratar de... Eh, we're going to try to improve the macro skills that we need to develop during this kind of courses, that is the listening the writing and the reading. Vamos a tratar de enfocarnos en esa parte de la lectura. Vamos a tratar de hablar y también de escuchar diferentes um, cosas, ¿verdad? Que nos van a ayudar a mejorar nuestras eh, habilidades. En este caso estamos empezando con la parte escrita porque ustedes están participando a través del chat, pero luego vamos a ir cambiando, ¿verdad? Un poco eh, la modalidad, ya sea a la parte hablada o a lectura y comprensión de la lectura. So in this case, we are going to like um, try to improve a lot of our skills because I know that you have um, knowledge, previous knowledge, and you have a um, very uh, good grades when you are like expressing your ideas in English. But we are just going to improve that part. We are going to make it better every day. So um, in that case, uh, also, you are going to participate on the activities. That is one of the most important things that you are going to do during the, uh, the sessions that you have to participate on the activities. Uh, because, because I have different activities for you. So it's better for us to practice in that way. And also you need to, to work on the platform and you already know that. Uh, and you have to complete section one and two for this week. Así que vamos a empezar a trabajar en la plataforma. Si hay dudas, si hay preguntas con alguno de los ejercicios que tengamos en la plataforma, eh, podemos tomarnos el tiempo, ¿verdad? Eh, durante la sesión usted eh, me escribe o me dice, mire, yo tengo dudas con estas um, eh, ejercicios y los vamos a resolver durante la sesión para que todos estemos eh, como presentes, ¿verdad? En, en la resolución de esos ejercicios. Y recuerden, sección 1 y 2 tiene que estar terminada para esta semana. Así que el día jueves ustedes tienen que ir terminando ya sus actividades. Si yo no voy con ese tema que usted va a resolver, no se preocupe, eso le va a servir como un eh, review del tema cuando estemos en la sesión. 
Así que usted puede ir adelantándose con su trabajo de la plataforma. That's okay. It is not like we are just going to say you need to, to work one exercise per day. No, it is not like that. So, if you have a question, you can ask in this moment because it's time to end the session. I don't know if you have to say something. No sé si alguno de ustedes tiene algo que decir en este momento antes de terminar la sesión. Uh, me teacher. Tell me. You will let this document in. We leave the link on this document. Yes, I'm going to send the link of this document, but I'm not going to send to you today. I'm going to send this link on Thursday. Se los voy a mandar el día jueves al grupo de WhatsApp. Because I can see everything you write down. Yes, Only I know. See a part of it. Yes, you can see just a part of this, but don't worry. You will have your, this link. Yo se lo voy a mandar el día jueves porque ya vamos a tener cuatro días trabajados. Entonces ahí sí van a encontrar toda la información completa. Pero no se preocupen, yo se lo voy a enviar y ustedes van a tener acceso libre al documento. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So, this is the end of this session number one. So, we are going to end here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So, have a really good night and see you on the session number two the next day that is tomorrow so see you tomorrow thanks see you. bye bye good night good night teacher good night good night teacher good night <laughs>